Hey guys, welcome to InventBox, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make an animation and actually render it. So let's get started. We have our start cube here, and for our simple animation what I'm going to do is kind of make it spin and speed up and then kind of launch in the air. You'll see, it's going to be pretty cool and very simple. So to get started, down here in our timeline, we're going to right click at frame 1, and this will set us to frame one. Now click the circle button, this is the record button, and now we have the record button on, click one of the arrows, and that will automatically set a keyframe right there. So our first keyframe without moving the cube is right there, and you can tell by that little orange square. If we hit I on the keyboard, we're going to add a rotation keyframe. So now that's a rotation keyframe, move it forward. I'm going to go like 35 keyframes. And then I'm going to hit R, X, and rotate this a few times on the X axis. Okay, now if we play the animation, you can see it spins. And that is actually just the base of animation. We're going to do a few more little things here. I'm going to go frame 60 and I'm going to bring it up and we want it to rotate a little bit more. So I'll rotate it a few more times on the x-axis. And now we'll take the ending to 60. And if we play our animation, you can kind of see what this looks like. It spins and then takes off. So that's the effect that we're going for. Now let's position the camera. You can see it's already pretty close, but I want to get it a little bit better. So if we put it at frame 1, so we can see where it'll start, we'll drag the camera into place. And if you want to animate the camera moving, that's just exactly the same way you can select the camera, add the keyframes, and move it around. Just make sure, now that we're done with that very simple animation, we click the record button again. And this will turn the recording off. See, if I left this on, and I go and do stuff like select the cube, and if, even if the uh, animation is playing, if I move this, it's still animating. So now if you look, I just kind of ruined the animation. It just kept adding keyframes. So if I do Control Z, that'll get rid of it. But that's also another way of animating. If you have the animation playing, then if you, you can hit G on the keyboard to grab it while the record button is on, it'll create much smoother of an animation. So now you can see our cube is floating along the screen like that. And that's a way of just doing it really quickly, but if you want to get it into precise spots and really do what you want, you can just add separate keyframes. And if you want it to look like a rotation, it all depends on where it's going to be moving. You can change it to rotation, scaling, location, but that's kind of the gist of it. Now that we have the simple animation, of it just spinning up our cameras in place we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of a background shift a add a plane there put it on the bottom and then for the walls I'm gonna make another plane rotate the plane and scale it up so right there is good. And I'll copy this and rotate that as well. So now we have the background set up. If we go into the camera view, you can see we're just going to add some colors. We'll change the rendering engine to cycles because even though EV is amazing, don't get me wrong, but I like cycles because I can use the plane lighting, which I use all the time and I think is super useful. So it all depends on what you're doing. 
I have a whole video dedicated to the differences between some of these rendering engines. I would encourage you to watch that. So we'll change our device to the GPU if we have one so it'll render faster. And now we can add our colors. I'm going to make this metallic and make the walls kind of a little yellowish. It's kind of tricky to see it. So what I'm going to do is make another plane here. Bring it up. Scale it up and give it an emission so it's going to be producing light on our scene. We'll bump the strength thump. So that's good. Now we'll change the color of this wall here. Maybe more of a blue kind of like the blue. Make this wall match and I'll make the cube red. Just like that. So now we have our scene laid out. You can see if I play it, it spins and goes up. It's hard to tell because we're in cycles, but that's good enough. If we go into solid view, you can see that looks just how we want it. I'm really happy with that. So now to render it, what we do is we tell it where to output the file. So we'll click the output button here, go to the desktop, save it where you want. And just so you know, I do have a Batman folder. That's not what you think. It's, it's the name of the computer. So I have a bunch of stuff in that folder. So if we go to invent box folder, we'll save it right here in animation, spinning cube, frames because it'll save a bunch of frames if we click accept now it'll save all of them there we want the file format to be ping for what we're doing if you want it just to be a test rendering that'll go a lot faster you'll render it as a jpeg if you want it to be a little bit higher quality you want to go with ping and that's normally as far as you need to go but if you're like rendering movies and it needs to be extremely high quality you want to go with open exr but for what we're doing we could even do jpeg i'm going to do a ping you can adjust the compression which will make the quality of the images better there's less loss so it'll really keep the color the same 15 percent is the default I'm just going to take it up to 50, because why not? 15 will be, it'll take shorter, but 50% will look better. So now we have everything set. It's rendering where we want it. We can go ahead and click Render, and then Render Animation. Now you can see the graphics card is going through and rendering this. But if you look closely, I don't like how pixely that is. So we'll hit Escape on the keyboard, and I forgot to change the percent up to 100. So now this is a much higher quality. So this is a true 1080. So now we'll render it again. And it's much higher quality now. That's the quality I was looking for. And now we'll go ahead and let the graphics card go through and render out this animation. It's only 60 frames long. It shouldn't take too long, but I'd give it a few hours. This animation takes a while. Okay, so now the rendering is finished. I actually let it render overnight. It probably only took about two hours, though. I actually for, kind of forgot about it and got sidetracked doing other things. But now we're back to this. And if you want to watch the animation, if you click the play button, you can see nothing happens. What you have to do is you have to compile it into a video because it rendered it in a bunch of frames. So to do that, go to the video editing tab, move your cursor to frame one, and click add image sequence and here this is where I have all of the frames saved so it renders and goes through each frame just hit A on the keyboard to select everything and click add image strip now if we click the play button you can see the animation right here play our preview and that I'd say that's pretty cool we only spent maybe 10 minutes building it or less that did not take very long so now we have this animation but we're not done yet 
we still have to compile it into a video. Right now, all the frames are just in a row. So now go back to default. Actually, we can stay in video editing to do this. In the output settings, and in the bottom, in the output, change the file format to FFmpeg video. Now, it all depends on what operating system you're using. I'm using Ubuntu Linux, and that's the um, option that I have available if you're using different ones. It's kind of a gray area which one to use. I like FFM, FFmpeg video. It works fine. So now that we've selected the file format, if we click render animation, it'll render it, go through it super quick. It only takes a few seconds. Now then, animation there is done. And now we can go into our files folder and see what the final animation looks like. So here in the files folder, we'll go to where I saved it, right here, and it should say something .mkv, and that's this one right here. So if we click on that, it'll play our animation, and if you wanted to put this into a software like Caden Live and render it as, say, like an MP4, you could do that. But now when I click the play button, you can see our animation, it's smooth, and I think it looks pretty good. So I hope you guys found this video useful and you kind of get a grasp of how to animate something and render that animation. So if you guys found this video useful, then I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.